Hi, I'm Phil, Dirty Driver. Why? Welcome back today. We are in Bromley, uh, home ground. Um, today we have got something very, very different. Uh, not something that I'm uh, used to doing, I don't get much of. Uh, we have here, as you can see, uh, just give you a little, little pan if I can, some uh, black limestone. Um, as you can see from this, let's give you a little zoom, it is not in the best condition. It has definitely, definitely seen better days. Uh, in fact, in some areas, the pointing, um, there's like cement residue all over the slabs. So it looks like it's, uh, it's like been pointed from the first floor window. Um, but yeah, so basically today we are going to be cleaning this. And uh, in the coming days, we're going to be giving it a nice coat of acrylic sealer. So basically what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be giving it a clean, uh, try and get as much of that residue out as possible. Uh, I'm going to give it a, um, a biocide sodium hypochlorite pre-treat. Uh, now I have mentioned before when it comes to sealing, um, when using um, sodium hypochlorite because it is a salt and when it dries out it can turn back into uh, salt crystals. Uh, what you're going to want to avoid doing is basically having any residue left behind on the surface. Any residue that has, uh, has been left, so obviously if you've not rinsed it down properly, anything that's left behind can cause binding issues with the sealer. Um, it can cause it to blister, to basically not stick, and you can end up with patches where the actual sealer is not bonded to the stone. So if you are going to be using a biocide or sodium hypochlorite, make sure you rinse it, rinse it really, really well. Um, I always tend to do it as a pre-treat, because um, then I know that when I'm jet washing, it's getting a very, very good rinse in. Um, and it's going to be a milder dose. Obviously with limestone typically um, it's quite a delicate stone. You can't use anything that's too acidic on it. Um, so you're going to basically be wanting to give it like a milder dose. I'll probably be using it on here about eight to one. Nothing too, too strong, but should be enough just to kill off any residual algae um, over the, uh, the back section over here. Um, because it's not particularly well laid, it, it's got quite a lot of um, dips. Um, so it tends to, the water tends to pool up in certain areas around here when it rains. Um, so obviously it can lead to uh, quite nasty um, algae blooms. It gets very, very slippery. And the customer has um, washed this a few weeks ago. I did come out a couple of months ago um, to have a look at this. And obviously I was very, very busy. It wasn't the right time of year to start doing sealing. So the customer did clean it themselves, um, done a reasonable job, um, just to basically make it less slippery um, and get rid of some of that residual um, algae and dirt that's um, basically causing it to be a little bit dangerous. Um, when it rains, it was like an ice rink. It was really, really bad. Um, so basically, the, the um, sealer that we're going to be using, I'm going to be using Smart Seal's Black Limestone Sealer. It is a tinted sealer, so it is actually a black sealer rather than a clear sealer. And it's going to be perfect for this because obviously this is really, really neglected. Um, any clear sealer that you'll apply to this, yes, it will give that nice kind of um, sort of richer look, um, uh, the sort of damp look that most people like, especially with black limestone. Um, but because this is so neglected and because of the, the residues that are left behind on here, any clear sealer that you apply will just show straight through. Uh, obviously, if you can't get rid of the mortar staining, because um, this apparently was laid about four or five years ago, so the residue, the cement residue has been there for quite a long time. Um, you're not, if you can't get rid of it, the black sealer will help to hide it. So long as it's not, you haven't got sort of thick snots of cement um, that are going to ping off, obviously, once you've um, once you've coated it with the sealer, so you've basically you know, turned it black. Obviously, if anything picks off or flakes off, it's going to show, show through the underside. Um, now, obviously, the sealer is not a paint. It is an acrylic xylene-based sealer, but it is tinted black. Um, and obviously, being that it is a tinted sealer, it will dye or color the joint um, lines. So whether you've got resin compound in there or whether you've got mortar joints, it will obviously turn the whole area black so you won't see any of the mortar lines it'll all be uniform and lovely um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you off this tripod I'm going to give you a little show around I'm going to show you what we're up against um, and then uh, we'll put you back up do the cleaning and then the sealing will be done in about four days time I've allocated Saturday to do it it's now Tuesday anything with mortar joints doesn't take quite so long to dry as block paving because obviously you're getting a lot of water and block paving into the substrate. This ideally needs about three to four days to dry off. So I've allocated Saturday. Weather this year has been absolutely atrocious. Um, what's happened to summer, God knows. Um, so obviously you're always fighting the weather. The weather is due to improve in the coming days. So fingers crossed, Saturday is gonna be a good day. Right, let's take you for a little uh, wander around.
Right, so we are handheld, so you're going to have to excuse any shaking. So as you can see, we've got a little bit of, um, just a little bit of clearing up to do before we start. Um, fortunately, we have got an apple tree there, which seems to be dropping uh, quite a bit of uh, fruit down. And obviously, if you leave them, they will start to decompose. Um, but yeah, basically, we're just going to give it a little pre-sweep. The customer's done a pretty good job for me already. They've um, cleared all the furniture off. They did give it a quick sweep in, uh, cut the bushes back for me because they were overgrown. Um, but yeah, basically, because the tree is dropping fruit, we're going to uh, you're going to be fighting that. But yeah, so this is it basically. Um, you can kind of see underneath. Uh, let's go down this way. Um, it's a bit poor wherever you go, but you can kind of see the darker colour where it's kind of sheltered from the rain. Um, but typically, the rest of it is very, very powdery. As um, it just looks very very neglected um, it's got this residue but it's been sort of pre cleaned so you know how much we're going to get out I'm not too sure um, around here is the worst bit looks like someone's thrown the mortar out the first floor because it's all around the outside of the slabs and obviously this has been down for quite some time um, it was the last thing to do when the house was extended got a couple of steps there just going to tidy up the back bit of grass we've got a nice fresh edge we're putting the sealer down but yeah basically everywhere just seems to be really bad uh, it's not too shabby under here slightly darker but again you've got these residues now the good thing um, when you're using the black limestone sealer um, because it is tinted that anything that is on the surface will become hidden so you're not going to uh, highlight it um, and you could, I'm not saying you, sh you should, but you can get away with using a slightly acidic cleaner. Now normally on anything limestone you do not touch it with anything acidic because it starts to eat the slab. Um, but as we are, um, as this is in pretty bad condition anyway, um, as we are putting a tinted sealer over the top which will mask anything so if you've got any kind of blemishes or anything any scratches on the surface it will basically um, mask it up um, but like I say it's not a paint so it's not going to flake off it is an acrylic sealer so it will impregnate into the sealer into the stone um, it's a two coat application just like block paving and this size patio which I worked out to about 70 square meters takes approximately 20 liters so yeah, that's it really. I'm going to uh, get set up and uh, get you up on a tripod. I'll probably put you up over there, um, just so you're out of the way and you can still see. Um, obviously you've seen me do cleaning before, but yeah, I'm basically going to pre-treat it and give it a, uh, a pressure wash. Nothing too harsh because obviously these joint lines, they're not in the best condition. Um, some of them are breaking away. Looks like it's got a massive mix of different types of jointing medium looks like you've got cement on the far side looks like some possible exterior grade grout down this side so yeah it's um considering the stone is such a lovely stone it's been very very poorly laid right let's get you uh, let's get some cleaning done
Welcome back. We are uh, Saturday, uh, about four days after it was cleaned. Uh, sun has been shining ever since. We've been very, very lucky. Uh, it's a perfect day for doing this. It's not gonna be ridiculously hot, and obviously there's no chance of it raining for the next uh, day or two. Um, so we're gonna be cracking on with this today. As you can see from the uh, finished clean, this has now been blown off with a garden blower. It's ready to go, it's ready to be sealed. Um, bit of a shadow on there so I'm not too sure exactly what you can see um, but yeah it's still very very pasty uh, there's a lot of sort of cement residues um, come to the conclusion that maybe what's happened is when the extension for the back of this house was built um, they built the extension put the patio down then used the patio area um, as an area to mix up all their muck for when they were doing the rendering on the outside um, because in the section I don't know if you can see it's um, it's sort of just along this this edge of this border um, over here and um, there's a lot of cement residue left behind and it seems to be mainly just there so it gives an indication that maybe they had a cement mixer sort of set up there and they were then basically mixing up all the muck ready for the render um, and obviously when they finished they've kind of just rinsed it rather than properly sort of jet washing it or anything they've just rinsed it it's all got stuck in the joint lines and basically it's made a bit of a dog's dinner of it uh, and obviously when they've kind of broomed it all off the residue has stayed behind um, and it's given this kind of bit of a nasty effect really um, there's also uh, some sections in the middle areas um, where it has been attempted to be cleaned um, by somebody previously with a bit of acid. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom you in, uh, but you can see there's a sort of subtle change of color around there. Um, it has had a form of acid put on it, which is not a very good idea with limestone, um, not a strong acid anyway. Um, so yeah, that's it basically, let's come back in. So we are going to be using, like I said, the uh, black limestone sealer from Smart Seal, and here is the uh, said product of choice. Um, it is a tinted sealer, so it is black, so it will give it a uniform black finish. Um, you can see by the clear top, it's it's, it's a black tinted sealer. Um, obviously. It may not be everyone's cup of tea because it will dye the joint lines. It will basically make the entire area black so you won't get any kind of distinct contrast around the joint lines. It has been previously sort of uh, grouted or jointed with a dark um, grout anyway. So originally when it had been laid it would have been um, dark on dark rather than using a contrasting colour. Um, so obviously it wouldn't really make much difference from the original. Um, but like I say, if you've got a lighter coloured joint in medium, so if you've got like a, a, a mortar colour or you've got a light kind of uh, grout, this will dye that um, black. So you'll get a black finish across the top. This is a very, very neglected patio. Uh, lots of um, residual, it's faded. You've got, you've got um, residues, the main, the main residue has been removed, but you've got a lot of it that's been, you know, sort of cement staining and stuff like that. This will blend it, it will hide it. Um, so basically it should give this a, a new lease of life, it should completely transform the look of this patio uh, and make it look a million dollars.
Okay, so I know you can't see me, um, but the first coat on this section is done. There's a little section just behind me, or behind the camera here, uh, and obviously uh, it's by the alley, so I need to get up there. So I'm gonna switch this off now. This is gonna dry, it'll be about, uh, it's about a two hour dry time between coats. Uh, this one's been down a fair while already, but obviously you can't really walk across it. Um, first coat does go down a little bit patchy because um, it has to soak into the stone. Second coat tends to give more of a surface protection. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to video the second coat because I simply haven't got enough battery to do another another hit. But I will show you a picture uh, coming up after this of uh, what it looks like when it's all finished and complete. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. This gives you an insight as to what um, as to how you, how you can achieve a transformation on black limestone. Um, as you can see, it's a massive difference over what it was. Um, there are a few uh, lines and stuff in here where you see some of the residue still showing through. Hopefully the second coat will cover all that up and just give it time to penetrate through. Um, but yeah, that's it. So that was a Smart Seal Black Limestone Sealer. And uh, so far, it's, it's the coverage is really, really good. I mean, that's only literally just, I've just broken into a second five litre tin. Um, so I was told it's gonna need 20 litres, but I don't think it will. Um, but yeah, I'll, um, I'll let you know how much it used at the end. Uh, I'll put it in the uh, description box. But yeah, hope you enjoyed. Happy cleaning. Bye for now.